Well, many years ago, my daughter, who is half Chinese, attended a local kindergarten in Johar Baru. And I remember one day I went to pick her up, and she came running up to me, and she said, Mommy, what's this? I said, I don't know. Ask your teacher. She turned and she said, Teacher, this what, ah? Huh? <laughs> I said, what did you say? She said, oh, Mommy, that's Malaysian English. <laughs> My fellow Toastmasters, we hear a lot these days about local varieties of English. Should we embrace them as a part of the culture? Or should we eliminate them and replace them with standard English? What do you think? Embrace or replace? Embrace. Yes, I love the local English here. It is the most colorful English in the world. <laughs> I especially love your crazy two-word phrases, where got. <laughs> also can, see first, see how. It's so unique. And frankly speaking, I do not think that it is possible to eliminate local English because linguistic habits are very difficult to break. Am I right? Yes. Now, throughout my entire marriage, my Chinese husband has been saying, get down from the car. And I've been saying, honey, we're not on the car, so we can't get down. We're in the car, we get out. And he says, oh, yeah. okay, get down. <laughs> Can't change. In fact, I was in a taxi the other day, and the taxi driver said to me, okay, miss, you get down here, huh? I said, no, 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 no. You get out here. He said, it's my taxi, you get out. <laughs> I think the important thing is that whatever English we speak, Malaysian English, Canadian English, Indonesian English, Bruneian English, that these days we be understood by people from other cultures. Am I right? Yes. I have to tell you, sometimes your local English is a little bit difficult for foreigners to understand. <laughs> I will give you an example. Now, when I first came to Malaysia, I went to a teacher's conference in KL. And at the end of the day, I said to a local teacher, I said, um, excuse me, I'd like to go back to the hotel now. Do you know where I might find a taxi? And she said, never mind, never mind. You follow me. I said, well, I, I, I don't have a car, so I can't follow you. Uh, do you know where I can find a taxi? She said, never mind, never mind, you follow me. <laughs> I said to my friend, she wants me to follow her. Should I run behind her car? <laughs> You see, it would have been helpful if she had used a more standard phrase like, I'll give you a ride. <laughs> I'll give you another example of how local English can be very difficult for foreigners. Now, my British friend Jolene came to Malaysia to work in a restaurant. And on her very first day, the manager asked her to make fruit juice. So he gave her some fruit, and he gave her a blender. And he said, you put in fruit after you switch on. <laughs> she goes, uh, excuse me, uh, I put in the fruit after I switch it on. He said, you put in fruit after you switch on. <laughs> so she switched it on. Put in the fruit, what happened? All the fruit came out. He said, I, yo, I told you, you put in fruit after you switch on. <laughs> See, she had heard, she had heard this, right? It would have been a little clearer if he had said, put in the fruit, after that, you switch it on. You see, sometimes one single word can change the whole meaning, right? I remember when my husband and I were first falling in love. I remember this one evening that was so romantic. Now, my husband's English was not very good at that time. And this was the night he was going to propose. We were dancing. It was so romantic. 
We just looked at each other, and he said in the most gentle voice, All your eyes are bad. How many eyes do I have? I felt like an alien. It was not romantic. There was no proposal that night. Now, sometimes, one single letter can change the entire meaning of what you're trying to say, right? My 17-year-old student, Chai Shen, had just come back from England. And she said to me, teacher, in England, many people very stupid. I said, what do you mean? She said, I fly to London. My skin very dry. My eyes very itchy. I go to information. I say, excuse me, where can I find ice cream? <laughs> he sent me to McDonald's, very stupid. <laughs> so where does this leave us with local English? Well, this is what I say. Yes, we need standard English because we must be able to communicate with people from other cultures. But what a terrible shame it would be to lose the beautiful, colorful, vibrant local English. So I say both also can love.